In a previous video, we have looked at how the frequency spectrum of a signal changes as it passes through a sample and hold circuit. However, we have only considered the case where the input signal has frequency components lower than the Nyquist frequency. In this video, we look at the case where aliasing occurs, that is, when the input signal has frequency components higher than the Nyquist frequency. We also look at where aliasing might occur in a control system and how to prevent it. Consider the sample and hold circuit shown here, where XA is the analog input signal, T is the sampling period, X star is the sampled signal, we abstract the zero order hold circuit with an ideal low pass filter, and YA is the resultant output signal. Suppose the frequency spectrum of the input signal is given by this plot. If the frequency components in the input signal exceeds the Nyquist frequency, or half the sampling frequency, then the sampled spectrum will look something like what is shown here, where we can see that the analog spectrum repeated at integer multiples of the sampling frequency overlap in the sampled spectrum. When this sampled signal is passed through an ideal low pass filter with cutoff frequency of half the sampling frequency, then this is the spectrum of the output signal. It is clear that, even with an ideal low pass filter, the input signal cannot perfectly be recovered and that the high frequency components of the input signal has corrupted the low frequency regions of the spectrum. This is called aliasing and is something we want to avoid in a control system. Let's look at where aliasing might occur in a digital control system. The signals produced by analog sensors typically contain noise and this noise often has high frequency components. If such a noisy signal is directly sampled, then it will corrupt the low frequency components of the signals in the control system, causing undesirable response. To avoid this, we place a low pass filter on the output of the sensor to remove the frequency components higher than the Nyquist frequency before the signal is sampled. This filter is called an anti aliasing filter. Ideally, one would use an ideal low pass filter with a cutoff frequency equal to the Nyquist frequency. However, an ideal low pass filter is not realizable since its impulse response is non causal, as shown here on the right. With a realizable low pass filter, we have to choose the cutoff frequency substantially lower than the Nyquist frequency to ensure that all the undesirable frequency components are attenuated sufficiently. However, we do not want the cutoff frequency of the anti aliasing filter to be close to the closed loop bandwidth of the control system since it would then influence the dynamics of the control system. If the closed loop bandwidth is relatively high, then it might be necessary to include the dynamics of the anti-aliasing filter in the plant model. 